Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over section 4.6 on our series on operations and decimals. We're going to be taking a look at how to multiply decimals by decimals. The types of problems we're going to be covering are presented in these two examples here, 4.2 times 5.7 and 17.3 times 7.4. Don't forget we have some practice problems for you to try out at the end of this presentation in order for you to demonstrate mastery of the contents that we covered. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. For question number one, two, and three, instructions are for us to find the product of the given numbers. So number one, let's say we have 4.2 multiplied by uh, 5.7. So we have previous tutorials that we went over the procedure for multiplying decimals. So this is basically a higher level presentation. If you want to review the basic steps for multiplying decimals, you can start at 4.1 um, video of this series and then we'll work your way up. We have 4.142, I'm sorry, 4.1, 4.4 and then 4.6. So when you go over those ones, and you will be able to review uh, some of the basic steps. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started multiplying here. Assuming you have a basic foundation on how to multiply decimals by whole numbers, um, what we're going to be doing here is extending that idea. All right? So when you're multiplying decimals, first of all, you multiply the numbers as though the decimal points were absent. Okay, so go ahead and ignore these decimal points. We're just going to multiply as though we're multiplying a two-digit number by a two-digit number. All right, let's go ahead and do that. 7 times 2 is 14. So you place a 4 underneath that digit of our multiplicand, 7. So place it right here. 7 times, seven is, seven times 2 is 14. Carry 1 over. 7 times 4 is 28, plus the 1 that we carried over is 29. Okay, and then we're going to move over to the 5. So if the decimal points were in there, this 5 will be in the, in the tens place, right? So when we're multiplying this digit of the multiplicand with the digits of the multiplier, the first digit of the product will be directly underneath the 5. Okay, so hopefully you remember that from our previous tutorials. To ensure that we place our product digits in the right positions, we're going to put 0 in the 1's place as a placeholder to avoid making mistakes okay so let's go ahead and commence with the multiplication 5 times 2 is 10 so you put a 0 here right underneath this digit of the multiplicand uh, and then we're going to carry one over since it's a two digit result okay 5 times 4 is 20 we carried over a 1 so 20 plus 1 is 21 now we're going to go ahead and add the digits of the partial product. So let's go ahead and add them up downwards. This is 4, 9, 3, and 2. So now, where do we place the decimal point? If there were no decimal points, this would be our final answer, 2,394. But now we have decimal points in our factors, okay? We have a decimal in the multiplier and the multiplicand. So where do we place the decimal point? So as we went over in our previous presentation in 4.4, you look at the number of digits to the right of the decimal point, okay? So there are two digits. One, let's change the color there. Two digits are to the right of the decimal point. We have one digit in the multiplier and another digit in the multiplicand. So let's write that down. There are two digits. Two digits are right of the decimal point. All right, so what does that mean? It means that we're going to position the decimal point two places in the opposite direction, okay? So starting from here, since there are two digits to the right of the decimal, we're going to move our decimal point, the number of digits to the left. So it's going to go one, two, two places to the left, okay? So our final answer for question number one is 23 
0.94. All right, let's take a look at um, another example. We're still finding the product question number two. What if we're multiplying 17.4 by 7.3? What's the product of these two numbers? All right, we're going to follow exactly the same procedure that we used for question number one and what we covered in section 4.4. Ignore the decimal points and just multiply these two numbers as though you're multiplying a three-digit multiplier by a two-digit multiplicand. Let's do it. 3 times 4 is 12, 2 carry 1. 3 times 7 is 21, plus the 1 is 22, so you put a 2 down, carry 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 2 is 5, 522. Now we're going to move to the tens place, assuming there are no decimal points, put a 0 here as a placeholder to avoid making mistakes in the placement of our uh, product digits. Now commence with 7. 7 is in the tens place of our multiplicand. 7 times 4 is 28. Put an 8. Carry the digit over to the tens place. 7 times 7 is 20. Uh, 7 times 7 is 49. 49 plus 2 is 51. So we'll put down a 1 and carry 5 over to the next place. And then with the last digit, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 5 is 12. Bam. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add up these numbers. We add it downwards vertically. We have 2. 2 plus 8 is 10. 0 carry 1. 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Bring down the 2 and the 1. All right. If there were no decimal points, this would be our answer, 12,702. But there are decimal points in both our multiplier and the multiplicand. So we need to figure out how many digits there are. So we have 1, 2. There are two digits. All right. So let's write it down. There are two, di two digits. Are right of the decimal place. The decimal point, sorry, right of the decimal points. So that tells us that we're going to move our decimal point uh, two places in the opposite direction, so to the left. So we're going to go one, two, bam. That's exactly where your decimal point will be. So the answer to question number two is one, two, seven, point zero two. Okay, all right, let's move on to um, question number three. All right, so for question three, what if we we're to find the product of 1, 4, 14.04, and 2.6? Let's write that. 2.6. What if we were to find this product? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, you notice in this particular example, compared to the others, we have actually three digits to the right of the decimal point. So let's see how that will affect um, the product, okay? All right, so let's commence with multiplying, following the same procedure. Assume that the decimal point is absent. We're, we're gonna be multiplying a four-digit multiplier by a two-digit multiplicand, and then when we're done adding the partial products, we'll consider the number of digits to the right of um, our factors, and then that will dis determine the placement of our decimal point. All right, let's do it. So six times four is 24. Put the four down, carry two. Six times zero is zero, plus two, zero plus two is two. Six times four is 24, four carry two. Six times one is one, plus six, I'm sorry, six times one is six, plus two is eight. All right, moving on to the two digit. All right, so let's put a placeholder there. Bam, two times four is eight. 
2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 4 is 8, and then 2 times 1 is 2. We're going to go ahead and add up these digits downwards. <clears throat> so what's it going to yield? It's going to give us uh, 4, 2 plus 8 is 10, 0 carry 1, 5. 8 plus 8 is 16, 6 carry 1, uh, and then 1 plus 3, 1 plus 2 is 3. So we have 3, 36,504, um, if there were no decimal points in our factors, but we have decimal points in both the multiplier and the multiplicand, right? So how many digits are to the right? 1, 2, 3. We have 3 digits to the right, okay? Three digits <clears throat> right of the decimal point and you know what that means right if you have two digits right to the to the decimal point we're gonna move three digits in the opposite direction so we're gonna go starting from here one two three bam there goes the placement of our decimal point. the final answer for question number three is thirty six point five zero four Okay, we're going to take a look at one more problem, a word problem, and then I uh, will give you some practice problems to try out. All right, so question four is as follows. We're going to take a look at the geometry application of what we're working on. So the dimensions, dimensions of a window frame Um, uh, is one four two one three feet by two point five feet. This is your task. Question: Find the area of the window frame. Okay, all right, so to get us started, we're going to write down the formula for finding the area of a rectangular object. So area of a rectangle, how do we know is a rectangle? Because the length and the width are different measures. So area of a rectangle uh, is um, length times width right length multiplied by width so let's give you a visual of what we're looking at right here so we have some kind of rectangular frame okay uh, and the length is 14.213 and the width is how wide it is 2.5 all right, what we're looking for is the area, this enclosed space right here, which is length multiplied by width. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's do it. So the area is 14.213 multiplied by 2.5. All right, let's go ahead and multiply that out. 14.213. We're going to multiply that by 2.5. Following the same procedure that we did previously in the past examples, just ignore the decimal point first, okay? Just going to multiply as though we're multiplying a four digit number, I'm sorry, a one, two, three, five digit number by a two digit number. Let's commence with the five. Five times three is 15. Five carry one. Now the ones place, five times one is five plus one, six. Five times two is 10, zero carry one. Five times five is, five times four is 20 plus one is 21. Put down the one, carry two. Five times one is five plus two, seven. Now let's move on to the next digits. Put a zero as a placeholder. Uh, two times three is six. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 1 is 2. 
bam all right so let's go ahead and add these digits downwards all right if we add them five plus zero is five six plus six is twelve two carry one one plus zero is one plus two three one plus four is five uh one plus four is five seven plus eight is fifteen five carry one one plus three is one plus two is three all right so this would be the answer had it been that there were no decimal points in this particular case we have three digits no four digits one two three four four digits to the right of the decimal point so what does that mean we're going to move our decimal point four digits in the opposite direction starting from here one two three four bam there goes our decimal point so the product of those two numbers which is the area is 35.5325 uh, square feet okay feet square because a feet times a feet is a square feet all right so a foot times a foot is a square feet um now let's go ahead and write down what our answer is the area of the frame of the window frame is 35.5325 feet square all right so there goes the answer all righty so here are the practice problems for you to try out Go ahead and pause this video presentation at this time and try these four examples. When you're done, click on the playback button and we're going to reveal what the correct answers are. All right, so go ahead and pause the video at this time and start working on these problems. All righty, welcome back. So here are the answers to question one to four. Go ahead and check your work. So how well did you do in these four practice problems? Let us know in the comment section below if you have any questions about these practice problems or what we covered um, in the tutorial. You can just let us know and we'll be more than glad to assist you. Thanks for taking the time to watch this presentation. Don't forget to help support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends. Uh, tons of support resources can be found at mathgotserve.com or in the links in the description below. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.